Well, that's the Irish hunting season officially over. It's now February the 28th, and we've had a fantastic and a long, exciting six months with clients from all over the world here with Irish safaris. However, my hunting doesn't end here. On Saturday morning, I'll be setting off to Africa for two weeks hunting with gem safaris. So sit back, stay tuned, and follow me into my next big adventure on the dark continent. I'm Norman Mulvaney, and you're watching Irish Safaris Hunting. Enjoy. Uh, for caracal, the dogs already treated the cat, but it jumped now. So uh, we're just waiting to um, to chase him up a tree again. And then what happens? Then he goes to the tree, and the dogs. And then we have to um, close in, see if we can get a shot at him. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy going. No, 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 no. How are we going, mate? Okay. We thought he was going to get that was an easier cat. <laughs> And now the head. So I'm here with Gem Safaris hunting with Paul Schumann and this morning we're in pursuit of zebra. Uh, we're hunting for the Burchell zebra here in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we're, hunt we're hunting a huge, huge area. It's not a fenced hunt by the way, this is completely free range animals. So we take whatever we see. Um, we're going to see what happens this morning. But the weather is looking super good. We're probably in the mid 20s at the moment. Probably going to climb to maybe 30 degrees today. Uh, we're hunting a nice mountain region. So we'll crack on and see what happens for the first hunt.
Okay, so Paul is after finding the zebra. Um, he's a long way from here. He's down. He's down on the plains, but we're up high, and we we're just kind of looking down into the valley where he is. But he's a long way away, and the area where he is is completely inaccessible for any vehicle to get in there for like the extraction of the animal. If this goes according to plan, so uh, we're going to sit up on top here. Then one of the drivers is going to pick us up. He's, he's, um, he's going to bring us around into the other side of the mountain, and we're going to try stalking from that side. The only problem is the wind is continually just turning and swirling here so much. And if he gets any scent, which I didn't know, I mean, I much about the zebra, but these guys are apparently very, very spooky. So we're constantly testing the wind, and the heat is just getting a little bit unbearable at this stage and it's only it's only nine o'clock here local time so yeah it's exciting it's a it's a fantastic area it's really really beautiful up here Stop now. He's gonna stop soon, just be ready. Okay, just quiet, okay? Take it. Two and a half hours later, it's finally happened. Uh, he came out over that big open plateau, and this guy was at a full gallop. And he stopped. Um, let's see what far he was. 149 meters, and he stopped for a split second. I just put it right onto his shoulder, and he's dropped. I'm just shaking my bloody hell here. Congratulations, Owen. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> the the boat a bit. That was good. So this is this old zebra stallion that we've been chasing all morning. And this is the one that was, he'd just been picked to go. Um, is it because he's too old, Paul, or what's... What's the situation? He was um, fighting with the other groups, trying to get in there. Yeah. And as soon as you get into that group, he will kill all the foals. Okay. So he can breed the mares again. Right. So this is the right one to take out if you have to. Because if you shoot anyone in the group, this one will come in and kill all the young ones. <sighs> I've never had a rush like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't cry. <laughs> no, there's gonna be there's gonna be no tears. There's, look, there's no tears. Everything is good, yeah. but I'm just shaking like mad here. Good taste of water box, I think. Yeah, we've seen some water but also. Yeah, coming here, Brian. Let me put him on camera here. Oh, just hold it down. What a day so far. And there's a water bug running on this open plain.
very, 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 very much. That's the shot. See, this is the triangle. Yeah. All zebra have a triangle. Yeah. And you can see this is from the fighting. This marks here. Yeah. I think when he turned, he was maybe at like an angle when I fired into here. Yeah. See, he also got a scar on his leg here. The old one. Could be where. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, my first zebra in Africa, and uh, he, he's an old boy, and that's why he was picked. Um, of course, after every hunt, you do have that. My slightly emotional thing that has happened. Um, Yeah. It's funny, you read all the books about Africa and you watch all the DVDs and I mean I've been following some big game hunter my whole life. Um I've read so many books on this and of course I've been to Africa before, but not like this, not this area, not this hunt. This was what I always wanted Africa to be and this is what it's this is my dream. Um of course you got all the emotions, the excitement, the adrenaline, you got that rush. Then the other side also, like the darker side of everything, but yeah. Oh everything worked out okay. He's uh 149 meters. Uh, we use the Viperflex, of course. We weren't going to Africa without them babies. We had them in Slovakia. Um, we didn't actually get to use them in Scotland that much, but yeah, nice and steady. Uh, we're using Paul's Seca 30 odd six. Only the ammunition was the 180 grain ammunition. It's the Baron with 180 grain rounds in there. And uh, yeah, he just took a couple of the steps. He went into like a semi-circle. But he's down on the spot and yeah, I couldn't be happier. And I mean, just look at the area around us and there's our trackers now coming in. Just this is Africa. 